I'd like to take a moment to let you all know about a new nonprofit organization started by my brother Craig. It's called Treats and Truth. They fill oversized brown lunch bags with snack items, chips, crackers, popcorn, cookies, etc. Also, a bottle of water, toothbrush, toothpaste, sanitary wipes, and most importantly, a small gospel tract book of John. No cigar? Uh, I'll have to talk to him about that. The bags are then hand-delivered to the homeless and people in need in and around the Los Angeles area. Let's help get this ministry off the ground. They're a 501c3 tax-exempt organization, so any and all donations are tax-deductible and greatly appreciated. Visit their website at treatsandtruth.org. Check out the show notes for the link. Also, please follow them on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you. Episode 148 of the Burning Bush Podcast, where we share the message of the Bible while enjoying a good cigar. Hope you're doing well, and I'm glad you've joined me. Today we're reading the New Testament book of Luke, chapter 5, with commentary from the notes in the Charles Spurgeon Study Bible, and I'm smoking the Grey Cliff Double Espresso Maduro in the Robusto 4.5 by 54 Vitola. And Grey Cliff doesn't have any... Uh, information about their cigars on their website, but I will link their website uh, in the show notes anyway. So let's go to the Cigars International website and see what they have to say. Double the espresso, double the fun. Enrico Garzaroli has said that he has one simple goal with Great Cliff Cigars, to create the ultimate cigar, I'm not sure that a perfect cigar exists, but Grey Cliff Double Espresso gets pretty close. The Grey Cliff Espresso line has been a bestseller for years, and with this follow-up, Grey Cliff has released a single-size extension that brings the blend to bold new places. Let's get one thing out of the way. This is a full-bodied blend with a high-octane kick. If that's your cup of tea, stick with me. We've got a dark, oily Pennsylvania broadleaf wrapper with a core of Dominican, Honduran, and Nicaraguan long fillers. Light it up and you'll be greeted with coffee, chocolate, spice, earth, and a natural sweetness. Double down your espresso game and get this cigar in your life. And again, the strength is full. A wrapper is Pennsylvania broadleaf. Binder is Sumatran, and the fillers are Dominican, Honduran, and Nicaraguan. And it only comes in one Vitola, the Robusto 4.5 by 54. That is the Grey Cliff Double Espresso. So let's get back into this week's reading of the book of Luke in chapter 5. I am reading from the English Standard Version, the ESV, in verse 1. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Genesaret, and he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. But at your word, I will let down the nets. And Spurgeon comments on verse 5. Master, Simon replied, we've worked hard all night long and caught nothing. 
but if you say so, I'll let down the nets. I have often spoken about the precious blood of Christ that cleanses all sin and about the blessings Jesus brings when he becomes one's Savior. However, it is important that we remind all who profess to have believed on him and to have become his disciples, not only to acknowledge him as Master and Lord, but also to do whatever he commands. The moment we become Christians and are saved by Christ, we become his servants to obey all his commandments. Thus, it is incumbent on us to search the scriptures that we may know what our master's will is. There he has written it out for us in plain letters, and it is an act of disobedience to neglect this search. By refusing to learn what the will of our Lord is, the sin of ignorance becomes willful because we do not use the means by which we might receive instruction. Every servant of Christ is bound to know what he or she is to do, and then, when he knows it, he should do it at once. The Christian's business is, first, to learn Christ's will, and second, to do it. Once learned, that will is the supreme law of the Christian, whatever may seem to oppose it. And back to Luke verse 6. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both the boats, so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to the land, they left everything and followed him. While he was in one of the cities, there came a man full of leprosy. And when he saw Jesus, he fell on his face and begged him, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I will be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. And Spurgeon comments on verses 12 and 13. While he was in one of the towns, a man was there who had leprosy all over him. He saw Jesus, fell face down, and begged him, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Reaching out his hand, Jesus touched him, saying, I am willing, be made clean, and immediately the leprosy left him. The pur perfectly pure one touched the leprous man without himself becoming contaminated. In any other house, the man who touched a leper would have been defiled. But when Christ comes into contact with impurity, he is not defiled. He removes it. This is what the gospel is meant to do to the world. We are to go and seek the good of the most fallen and abandoned of men, and those who do so ought to have so much of the Spirit of Jesus Christ in them and so much vitality in their piety that they will not be tempted by the sin on which they look. On the contrary, they are instead to overcome that sin and impart spiritual health as opposed to receiving infection. May we be in such a state of health as Jesus was. And back to Luke, verse 14. And he charged him to tell no one, but go and show yourself to the priest and make an offering for your cleansing, as Moses commanded, for a proof to them. But now even more the report about him went abroad, and great crowds gathered to hear him and to be healed of their infirmities. But he would withdraw to desolate places and pray. On one of those days as he was teaching... Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there, who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea, and from Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with him to heal. And behold, some men who were bringing on a bed a man who was paralyzed, and they were seeking to bring him in and lay him before Jesus. But finding no way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof 
and let him down with his bed through the tiles into the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said, Man, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to question, saying, Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? When Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered them, Why do you question in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you? Or to say, Rise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, Rise, pick up your bed, and go home. And immediately he rose up before them and picked up what he had been lying on and went home, glorifying God. And amazement seized them all, and they glorified God and were filled with awe, saying, We have seen extraordinary things today. After this, he went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And leaving everything, he rose and followed him. And Levi made him a great feast in his house, and there was a large company of tax collectors and others reclining at table with them. And the Pharisees and their scribes grumbled at his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus answered them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And they said to him, The disciples of John fast often and offer prayers, and so do the disciples of the Pharisees, but yours eat and drink. And Jesus said to them, Can you make wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast in those days. He also told them a parable. No one tears a piece from a new garment and puts it on an old garment. If he does, he will tear the new, and the piece from the new will not match the old. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. If he does, the new wine will burst the skins, and it will be, be spilled, and the skins will be destroyed but the new wine must be put into fresh wineskins. And no one, after drinking old wine, desires new, for he says, the old is good. And that's the end of today's reading in the book of Luke. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to the Charles Spurgeon Study Bible, as well as today's cigar. Also, Groundworks Ministries for daily Bible studies and devotionals. Treats and Truth Ministry, where you can get involved in helping to spread the gospel to and be a blessing to the homeless, and the Burning Bush Merchandise Store, where you can pick up some items to help spread the word about the show. And if you know anyone who needs to hear this, please let them know about the podcast and help share the message of the Bible, the hope we have in Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ. If you'd like to contact me, you can email me at steve at the burningbushpodcast.com, which is linked in the show notes as well. So until next time, have a great day, have a great cigar, and God bless.